Our top story, putting America last. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm testifying before Congress today after President Biden cleared the way for Russia's Vladimir Putin to build his pipeline in Europe. Remember, the president, President Biden, killed the Keystone XL pipeline here in the U.S. on his first day in office. Hillary Vaughn is on Capitol Hill with the details of all this. Hi, Hillary. Hi, David. Well, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm was peppered with questions today from lawmakers asking about pipelines from Colonial to Keystone, but she was really put on the spot today when she was asked about Russia's own plans to build their own pipeline, the Nord Stream 2, and why the Biden administration is taking a different position on that pipeline than the one here at home. Do you have uh, any information for us today about why President Biden has pivoted nearly 180 degrees away from his previous position? Um, I have not been specifically briefed on that. This waiver, which benefits seemingly to me, benefits only Vladimir Putin. And we've already disadvantaged the citizens of the United States by not completing the last hundred yards of the Keystone pipeline. Lawmakers also wanted answers as to why the administration canceled Keystone when some science says killing it actually blew up our carbon footprint, adding emissions the size of half a million cars on the road. Did the administration cancel the pipeline because of politics? Because it was clearly not for climate benefits, because it's going to increase climate, it's going to increase carbon emissions. No, it, it canceled. I mean, the president made this commitment um, because he believed that there are other ways to go, especially in promoting clean energy and okay. cheap energy. Uh, but, you said that energy. Pipe, but you said that pipe is the cleanest way, the safest way to move fuel. And the secretary also walked that back today. Last week, remember, she said the pipe is the best way to transport fuel. But today, she said it only sometimes is the best way. David. Hillary, thank you very much. And joining me now to discuss is Marsha Blackburn, Republican Tennessee senator. Uh, senator, a lot of people are having trouble getting their heads around what's going on here. I mean, Russia, we Russian pipelines that reward Putin, who likely was responsible for the colonial hacking last week that affected millions of Americans, cost us billions of dollars. Uh, that's OK, but U.S. pipelines are evil. How do you square those two things? Well, there is no way to square that, David, and I think the administration knows this. And I will tell you this, they know that a pipeline is the best way to go. They are trying to appease the leftist, and so therefore they cancel the Keystone Pipeline, and now you have Gretchen Whitmer in Michigan saying she's going to cancel Line 5 in Michigan. And then you have the attack on the Colonial Pipeline, and all of a sudden the American people got a nice little glimpse into what life would be like if this group of leftists got their way on environmental policy. This is why people are saying, restart the Keystone Pipeline. This is why people are saying, let's put attention on cybersecurity. And it's why in Michigan they're saying, you got to be kidding me when they talk about squelching another pipeline. Right. Well, I, look, I'm not surprised that Joe Biden uh, is, is, is trying to kill U.S. carbon energy. He said he was going to do that yeah. during the campaign back in February 2020. Uh, I'm, I'm holding a headline here. Joe Biden says we are going to get rid of fossil fuels. I mean, but there's six million Americans that depend on fossil fuels for their daily bread. Six million American workers work there. He claims he's going to come up with green jobs to replace all those jobs at a better pay. Does do any of those six million American workers believe that? No, they do not believe that. And bear in mind, it is six million employees, which represents six million families and millions more Americans that directly depend on some form of hydrocarbon fuels as a part of their livelihood and their work. And here is the thing, when you talk about solar panels, as he said, there would be solar panel jobs, or John Kerry, I think it was, that said there would be jobs making solar panels. Right. Most of those companies are in China. 
So for the Chinese, yes, there would be jobs for them for creating these solar panels. When you talk about wind turbines, where are these made? They're made in China. I am pro-America yeah. for American jobs, American energy. We worked hard to be energy independent. I think that's where we need to position ourselves as a nation. And when, when you're talking about China, you have to throw in the fact that he just threw a big bone to them by releasing the patent rights of these American pharmaceutical companies that spent billions of dollars coming up with a vaccine, guess who's going to be uh, make, using those patents to, to build their own vaccines? It's the Chinese. When we could do it right here, we are on track. We are all tooled up to do it here, to feed the world with our vaccines. Instead, he's releasing the patents. I mean, it's, it's, it's the idea of rewarding our enemies. And let's face it, China and Russia, and by the way, in the Middle East, we have the situation of the radical Democrats in Congress, and now perhaps President Biden himself defending a terrorist organization, Hamas, over our decades-old best ally in the world, Israel. I mean, what, what is happening our there? Yes, our beacon of democracy in the Middle East, Israel, as you said, our ally. And Hamas has been recognized as a terrorist group by the U.S. government for the past two decades. And for the president to be defending or acting as if he is going to defend Hamas and not publicly loudly supporting Israel, a sovereign nation, as Israel is defending itself against terrorist attacks. Right. It is Hamas who is um, pushing these rockets, shooting these rockets into Israel. It is Israel using the Iron Dome, which the U.S. has helped to develop, to protect themselves, to think that there would be elected representatives in the U.S. saying, oh, Israel, just agree to a ceasefire. Hamas can't defend themselves. This is so incorrect and completely inappropriate. Well, and we saw the president, uh, we don't know what he was saying to Rashida Tlaib in private. Uh, he had a, a, a meeting with her on the tarmac that lasted about six or seven minutes, uh, but then came out publicly saying what a, a great leader she is, et cetera. She, she calls Israel a terrorist organization. Has anybody asked her whether Hamas is a terrorist organization? Because I don't think she would answer that. Do you? I have, uh, do not have a relationship with her, but what I do know is this. We have recognized Hamas as a terrorist organization for two decades. It is inappropriate to give any kind of aid to them. Israel is our ally. It is vitally important that our allies know that we are going to stand with them and that our enemies know that we are going to oppose them. Yeah, and, and by the way, of course, they are supporting they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't have the rockets that they're lobbing into Israel were it not for Iran, which is another one of That's our right. enemies uh, that, by extension, we are supporting uh, by, by doing what we're doing. We may sign another nuclear deal with them. So you got Iran, yeah. you got Russia, you got China, and the big losers and in all Korea. these. And North Korea. The big losers in all these situations are American workers. Uh, the president says yes. he cares about them, but he's got a strange way of expressing that uh, that care. Uh, we got to leave it at that, Senator. Great to see you. Thank you so much Good for being here. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. Well. Mm -hmm. the